In this video, I'm gonna make up a basket press for my honey. G'day, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm, I'm Stuart Chignall. And uh, I, yeah, time for harvesting some honey. Now, last season, I made up a series of what we call cheeses, which is basically you get a cloth and you wrap the comb in the cloth and then you press the cheeses that are individually wrapped in cloths. It worked, worked pretty well actually. But this year I want to try out a basket press and see how much easier it is, if at all. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the same stainless steel sink to press the honey into and then it will flow out there and then we'll use the, the tap there to uh, jar the honey or bottle the honey. So I want my basket to be able to fit into the base of the sink. So if we went for a diameter of, oh, let's say 275 I reckon. Actually I think we'll get away with 290 because I still want to put some boards in the bottom of the sink to, to provide some channels to allow the honey to flow through towards the, you know, towards the, the bung hole, sink hole, hole, drain hole, drain hole, that's it. Now I could make the basket out of wood uh, held together with some sort of strap, but what I'm going to use is a stainless steel mesh. Now this is leftover mesh that I had from making uh, bee bottom, uh, hive bottoms, meshed hive bottoms. So I'm going to uh, cut off a rectangle out of this to make a, to make the, the, well, the basket. Think about this a little bit more. Because the sides of the sink are sloped, once I put the boards down the bottom, it's going to get a bit wider. So I can probably do a 300 mil basket. The circumference of a 300 mil circle, what's that? It's 2 pi r, which is pi d, so pi times the diameter. So, oh wow, adds up, Nine me 940 mil. Okay, and we want a bit of an overlap. So how tall do I want it? Now if the diameter is 300, 600 is probably too much. A two to one ratio could make it a little bit, a little bit tippy. So I think, I think 500 is a safe, is a is a safe maximum height. It's a bit less than a two to one ratio. Strip off an outside wire from either end. Ugh, a bit stiff. Have you suffered? That's better. Unfortunately, uh, when I originally did this, I didn't get this on film. So this little bit that I'm about to show you is after the event. Um, so, but you'll get the idea. All right. So what I did is I formed a basket, like so. And what would probably be easier, handier, would be having a solid, uh, like some sort of metal strap to do this. But um, I didn't have one, so I used rope. So just wrap that around a few times. And then tightened, tightened the rope up. I did. It was a bit of a ways away. I just started 
just wrapped it up like that. And that, once the press started pressing down on it and spread it a bit, locked it in nice and tight. Didn't have any problems with this arrangement slipping. But I had another rope here and another rope there to just hold the shape right. So I'll just take you in for a close-up of how that's done. You can see the original one is wrapped around and it's locked in place and then the other one locks in place there. Now what you can do is if you were worried about this coming about, you could put a little stick through there or what you could do is you could run the rope, a piece of rope through those and uh, means that they can't pull out. But I didn't have any problems with that slippage. I did actually, I did actually put a piece of rope through these, this little loop to stop it from coming undone. But the loop at the top, the middle and the bottom, uh, this loop didn't actually tighten up and bind on the piece of rope that I stuck, put through there, so it wasn't it wasn't really necessary. So I've got the blocks of wood in there forming a platform, and I've got the the basket there ready to receive the cheesecloth. And once I've got the cheesecloth in, then we can start putting the crushed comb in. Now this is what we're using as a cheesecloth. It's a high density polyethylene woven material. I need a square of it that'll go down the sides of the basket, across the bottom, and up with plenty to wrap over at the top. The basket's about 300 mil in diameter and 500 tall. That's 800 times two, so I need 1.6 meter square, roughly. Okay, so I'm at the Benigo Men's Shed, and this is a off, off cut from the table I've just been finishing working, working on. So I'm gonna make a capping board. Very important to remove that. Sometimes people forget. So well, that's the end of the build for the pressing basket. The only other detail we needed was on top of the pressing board was uh, some blocks of wood to build up the height a little bit, but since we already had those cut, yeah, that's no big deal. And you can use whatever you have for that. The pressing went really, really well. Oh, that was really, really close. We'll get to see that in the next video. Uh, right now I'm out here after dark, finishing up the rendering of the wax and I need the wax from this process to then be used to repair the trough that will be catching the apple juice as it comes out of the apple press. Damn, I can see daylight through there. Once that's done, we'll then be throwing around, I think we've got about 600 kilos of apples through the press and be getting a whole stack of fresh juice. So if you want to see those videos. Oh, that smells good. Uh, they'll be coming out in due course and you'll get notified if you subscribe and you hit the bell icon. Uh, as always, I hope you find this stuff useful, if not entertaining. And any questions or anything, um, feel free to ask and I'll uh, jump into the comments and do my best to uh, clarify whatever I've made a mess of. Catch you guys later. Bye-bye. That looks so good. But you're going to have to wait.